Hi, this is Adele, and in today I feel so privileged to introduce you and to talk with Lee Eisman, who is the expert on color. I picked up her book at the Bainbridge Island Museum of Art and read it cover to cover, and um, she's got several books, and I was fascinated um, by all the information that she has. So I asked her to come, and she's been willing to come, and we're just going to have a conversation about color. So here's Lee. Hi, Adele. Hi. I'm so delighted, to that we've made this discovery of each other. I know. Here we live on this island that's not too big, and we were introduced by a mutual friend, and when you told me about your love of color and of obviously your love of art and your ability to create wonderful art, uh, we're kindred spirits, so we had to have this conversation, right? It, it was meant to be. It actually was meant to be. And I have never been a color person. So I was fascinated by your book. The one that I read was 100 plus questions. Mm -hmm. And I learned so much from that, like how, you know, colors that we are drawn to, colors that we are repelled from, you know, how it affects our life. And we're unconscious of it. So I would love to hear, you know, just start wherever you want by telling us how you got here. Or if you want to start right in, just lead us to information about color and you. Well, you mentioned the book, and uh, we are going to be doing uh, another version of that book. It was the 100 Most Asked Questions About Color, and we're going to take it probably up to about 250, <laughs> because there are so many questions that people have about color. And even if you're a dedicated colorist, if you love color, I mean, if you were born wanting to use those crayons all the time, and I think probably a lot of your students uh, are that way. Some people are just inherently attracted to it and have an ability and a talent. But I do believe in developing more of your color sense. I don't believe when people say to me, oh, I don't know anything about color. I don't know how to use it. My wife picks out all of my clothes. Still, there are emotional attachments to color that many of us, uh, most of us, will encounter when we're children. Give any child a box of crayons and they will start to scribble with abandon. It's just when we get a little older and we listen to those other people saying, oh, you must never use red and pink together. And I remember when I was a child, green and blue would never be used together. Can you imagine? I mean, think in terms of nature and the way that you see green and blue, that beautiful rolling green meadow and the blue sky above, why would you not want to use those colors together? So many people have grown up with these restrictive color rules. And that's what I try to uh, kind of uh, get them unencumbered from. There are guidelines about color. There's no question. And that's included in many of our books. And as a matter of fact, my daughter and I are working on putting uh, our training online. I've done training here on the island for several years. People well, sign me up. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we have had people from all over the world come to Bainbridge and take this class. Um, of course, we've had some impediment to teaching the class now, and so as a result, we've decided to put it online. And so we do include color theory, but uh, it's from a guideline standpoint, as I said. It's not something to be so strictly adhered to that it doesn't allow you to use your own uh, gut level feeling about color. That's part of what color is all about. There's also the psychology of color, which of course is very important. And uh, I think that if you lead most people down the path of psychology of color, they will have a story to relate to you. And often it's attached to their childhood because we find that our childhood memories are so imprinted in our brains that we may not be overtly conscious of it but the sense of color that came from that experience uh, stays with you. And those experiences can be happy, they can be sad, they can be traumatic. And whatever colors that are attached to that stay in within your psyche. And years later, you might look at a color and say, oh, I don't like that color. Um, I hate that color. And if you question, you know, I become the color therapist then. I question people to ask them, well, why is it that you hate that color? And even if they don't have an explicit explanation right at the moment, if they give it some time and some thought, uh, they will recall a situation in their childhood, most likely, that helped them to uh, dislike that color. 
And so my question always is, but you're an adult now, uh, put away the, the childish uh, prejudices about color and let's think beyond what that color meant to you at that time. I get the question all the time, what is your favorite color? And I have to say, I don't, you know, a colorist can't have a favorite because it's all about not only the color in itself, but the way that you combine the color with other colors. So you may not like a color within a given context, but change the context and give it a different spin with another color. And it becomes really something that's quite beautiful. Wow. I would, that's one of the things that I read in your book that fascinated me, um, the psychology of color, and that it all goes back to childhood, the memories and everything, because we each have, you know, it's like if you ask women to go into a store with all these clothes, the first thing you do, the first thing I do is I'm going to the one that I'm drawn to the color. It, that's not even what the outfit is, but it's what the color is. Mm -hmm. And then there are other ones that I never go to. So I'm so curious, as to, is that still the same thing as you are, are drawn to? Um, and also for artists, you know, how you pick a color palette and how you keep going to the same color palette. And it's really hard to change your color palette or to try. There's almost a, this visceral feeling of, oh, I can't do that. I can't do that color. I just can't see that color. So that was one of the things that just fascinated me. Well, it is fascinating, and there are several reasons why people are drawn to certain colors. Usually, as you say, you walk into a store and you see a round of, of colored merchandise, and your hand will reach for the one that appeals to you the most. Again, that can be associated with some very positive memories that you have about that color, even though you might not recall them. But there's also another aspect of it, and when we're talking about clothing in particular, um, everyone has a particular set of colors in their own uh, persona. And that's the color of your hair, the color of your eyes, the color of your skin. And that does often, particularly for people who are artistic, they have this proclivity to going to certain colors because over the years they've gotten compliments when they've worn those colors. They've gotten warm fuzzies starting again in their childhood or they simply have this inherent good sense about color and they know what works for them. Um, however, there are others who don't quite understand that and have to be taught. And so that's another program that we're teaching online. And it's based on a theory that I call the color clock theory. The color clock theory. Yes. Oh, tell us about that. Well, the color clock theory is based on color in nature. And colors will change. Of course, the great artist Monet showed us that with his haystacks and the lilies and various other things that he had painted. Uh, the morning colors are very clean, clear, mostly cool. Evening colors, more dust particles in the air. Our sunsets are quite beautiful and vivid, often with orange, much warmer. And in the midday, we have the strength of the sun, which has a tendency to pull color a little bit out of the object that it's resting on. So the colors get a little bit more pastel -y, sort of like what I call ice cream colors. Uh, and we have, each of us has our own coloring that is built around a color uh, time, as we call it, that occurs in the color clock. And they are called sunrise, sunlight, and sunset. In addition to that, there's a group of what we refer to as crossover colors, where you have a great many of your neutrals or colors like navy and black, uh, colors like true red, interestingly, that are seen in nature to the extent that our eye is accustomed to seeing them in many applications and in many contexts. And so they will work within the framework of the other three palettes as well. So that's a very quick a uh, demonstration of what this is all about. Uh, it's further explained in my book, More Alive with Color, and uh, our training session is based on that particular book. Well, I'm. how many books have you written so far, or you have published? Ten. Ten? Yes. And I accidentally came across that one and just gobbled it up. I mean, gobbled it up. So I, I gotta get all ten, and I would, <laughs> cause I really, <clears throat> I love learning about color. And uh, when I went to art school a long time ago, that was one thing that they didn't actually teach me. I never did color theory or do, a co I didn't know the color wheel. I had to, after college, basically go learn it myself. Mm -hmm. So I took all these courses and this, that, or the other, and you know, complementary colors and this. I actually got all these so that, it, you know, just to see, um, or any response you have or, or what have you, like, 
how we choose color, how we live with color on, on us, how we even design color in our house. I'm sure that has an effect on us. You know, I've heard so much about what color are you going to paint your rooms? You know, and mm -hmm. people get interior designers to help them pull everything together. Mm -hmm. Well, again, I think some people, you know, inherently have a natural sense. But even those people often will say, you know, this is what I'm going to choose. And, and, they, and they choose it and they like it. And then someone walks in the house and maybe it's not their favorite. And uh, they may not be, you know, deliberately mean about it, but they may say, oh, well, that's an interesting color. Why did you choose that? And, you know, some people react very strongly if they have that negative response from someone else. And so what I try to do in, in my training uh, and on all of my books is to tell people you have and we can help you find your own sense of color and don't be concerned about how others may criticize it because they're coming from their own space with color, what they like and dislike. Uh, you have to build up that, that knowledge uh, base yourself, and certainly education is a part of it. There are many books, I think maybe seven of my books may have the color wheel in it with something about color theory that's included, because again, that's kind of the mother of color theory. Uh, that's where it all started, and this be provides a baseline. But there are other as aspects and attributes of color to be learned about, not the least of which is within the psychology of color. And that's something I think is very, very important to, uh, to delve into and to investigate. Uh, the people that come to my classes, I will tell you, are all ages, male and female, uh, people who come from Seoul, Korea, and Greece, and here in the United States, and and right and in, and in Poulsbo, Washington, yeah. um, we have people who come who really have a good innate sense of color, which I encourage. But what I help to do is to validate their own sense of color. It's that kind of validation that is often needed to say. Wow, I you know I know I'm on the right track now. Now I found out the reasons why. I think that's an important part of the learning process. Absolutely, and I'm so glad you brought that up because the students and anybody who's in the arts, you know, I have a membership, and they are they put their paintings online and want comments, and I keep trying to tell them, be careful of what you hear because you are the decide you're the one that's going to make the final decision right. it's got to s satisfy you exactly. and so again you're kind of making my point mm -hmm. <laughs> where people coming in it's about what they like and don't like and i don't want people you know my students and anyone else to be influenced or or not trust their own instincts mm -hmm. i keep saying trust your instincts and encourage them and try to validate what they're trying to do and mm -hmm. to be cautious or just hear it what you know feedback people do want feedback but to really take it how would how what well, would you give any advice to like my students who like if they get an advice like oh how about that red's too strong or these colors i'm not sure go together what could i tell them or what would you tell them to you know, help them along? Well, I think it depends on, obviously, if they're studying art. Uh, art is a, is a whole category all by itself because that is so, so much about self-expression. And I, I totally agree with you in, in allowing them to validate their own self of, of self-expression, that the self part is really an important part of it. I think there's another element, though, too, and that is the psychological aspect of the color. You know, what does a color mean uh, in this painting? Does it set a mood? Uh, what, what mood does it make you feel? Because when people select art, it is often because it, it puts them in a mood. They look at it, it makes them feel joyful. Uh, perhaps it makes them feel excited or they want a sense of calm. And I think if you can step back from the work that you've created and look at it from the standpoint of how does it make me feel? there's going to be somebody out there who's going to react to that mood and that feeling. And you just have to trust your sense of where you're going. Of course, there's also, and I talk about this in my books and my classes as well, there's the aspect of dissonance and discord. Now, one time we had a lot of never, never rules about you must never, you know, things I've already mentioned. But now we're seeing that even in, in the way we put ourselves together in the clothing that we wear, sometimes discord is a fun thing to do. 
you know, mixing in form and shape the plaids and the circles and so on and so forth. But it's also in the mixture of color that there is some degree of discord that is kind of fun. Uh, and I think that adds a little humor and a little whimsy. So you're not using the color rules, the established color rules, but you're just veering off a little bit. Now, if that's not a comfort level for you, if you're one of those people that really likes perfect harmony all the time, you don't want discord, then you need to go with that feeling because that's expressing you as the artist and someone out there is going to relate to that and feel the same way about it. Um, I loved hearing you how you say the, the mood and then um, is, are there something, are there colors associated? And I'm sure there are, I just don't think of it that way with the calm, for instance, is it blues and greens or cools? And what about the excitement, you know, um, that gets you excited or beauty? Beauty's actually, as we know, the, in the eyes of the beholder. Mm -hmm. And so everybody, I tell my students, look, whatever you do, I've, I've been, had a lot of one person shows and I you would sit back and watch and each person who came in would gravitate to a totally different painting for whatever the reason is, you know? Um, so I'm very um, curious about your mentioning discord and if you're comfortable with discord or if you're not, do you have an example of what, for instance, of what colors might, or, you know, might be discordant? Well, I, I think that there was back in the 70s and 80s kind of a movement, particularly in color for personal use, to put people in little boxes since, you know, you are a certain season and you never venture out of that box to another season. And uh, my concepts are very different than that. I think that you can start out with, a, you're a sunrise person and you relate well to those cool morning colors and a lovely pink and uh, some of the jewel tones that are found in the sunrise. But there are times that you wanna venture out into another palette and bring that in for an accent. Now, some might call that discordant. Uh, I don't call it discordant because it's a matter of proportion. If you were to use a sunrise palette, let's say, and uh, you wanted a little bit of that, you know, just a touch of that orange sunset, uh, and you put it in those cool colors, as long as you get the proportion proper, you, in order to set a mood, it's about 75% should be within the same palette. Then you get your predominant mood. So if we're working with cool colors that are kind of calming, but we want to add that sense of excitement, we would go 75, 25, perhaps even a little more, 85, 15, just to get that little bit of touch of discord to get attention. But that also brings out something else that's important to know, and that's called homeostasis, where again, going back to the 60s, even further back, maybe the 50s, 60s, and 70s, you never, never, never went out of a color palette. If you did blues and greens and cools, you stayed within that palette. That's not very good advice. Because what we find through homeostasis, which is really the, the meaning of the word is balance, bringing balance into our lives. We all experience the fact that we're trying to balance our lives all the time. The food that we eat and what we do, our occupation, find some time for play even though we work hard. That's all this human need for homeostasis. And I think in uh, if you were decorating a room, because you're right, this is a, an area where people often have questions. Uh, if you decide, I love the warmth of nature around me, I love the warm colors, I feel very at home and very at ease, it reminds me of sunlight, it makes me feel good. But if you were to do an interior that were completely done in warm colors and you didn't have any touch of coolness, you'd start to get uncomfortably warm. I mean, physiologically, the temperature changes in a room that is too warm. So you deliberately bring a plant in, obviously green. Uh, you bring in some coolness into that warm area to get that homeostasis going. So it's important never to choose. If I'm going to give a never rule, it would be try not to choose an area and make it so cool that it becomes ster sterile and off-putting. Uh, and people do this all the time with white, I have to say. Very cool white, everything is white and very sterile. And so you walk into a room like that and you feel, you know, it's, it's awfully cold in here. I need something to warm it up a little bit. So you instinctively have these feelings, uh, but you don't quite know how to do it. And I would say to you, the color 
color is the perfect tool to use to get that balance or homeostasis going. I love it. Now, I could talk to you all day <laughs> and I want to take every training you do. I want to get every book. <clears throat> and I want you to tell us about your books and your upcoming trainings. Before I get you to do that, is there anything else that you would add or want to offer or tell all the people who might be watching? Well, the word creativity comes up all the time. And uh, when I will talk to people, I had the opportunity on planes to talk to my seatmate. Uh, and somebody would say to me, more particularly men than women, oh, well, you know, I'm not creative. I, I don't know anything about color. Um, and I say to them, wait a minute, you know, this could be a nicely dressed woman sitting next to me. And she has lipstick and makeup on, she has nail polish on, but she doesn't know anything about color. And I will say to them, but wait a minute, you made choices about color. Obviously you have them, you're wearing them. Um, you're having friends over for dinner and you enjoy putting the placemats out and the, and, the, and the plates and putting some flowers on the table and the stemware. And it's all an exercise in creativity. Think about something that you do every day and you take it for granted and you don't think of it as a creative exercise. Now, I'm sure your people understand creativity, but uh, many people don't understand that creativity is something that we can do in our everyday lives. And I, I, that's, that's my mission in life, to show everyone that they do have that degree of creativity within them. Well, that is a, I'm on board with that. And um, thank you, thank you. Now, will you tell us, um, or can you name um, any of your upcoming classes or trainings, how they can um, get the books that you offer? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So anybody who wants to learn more, like myself, mm -hmm. um, can, can get in touch with you or take the training and get the books. Well, the best way to reach us is through leatriceisman.com uh, because we do sell the books online. And of course, you would get a signed copy then, which is an advantage. Uh, in addition to that, the classes, uh, we do have one class that is the, uh, the color times that I mentioned, the color clock theory. Uh, that's a personal image class. That is an online class that we have been uh, having online for several years now, and we've recently updated it. So that is one class to take that would teach you about that theory. And we are currently working on putting our color design program uh, online now. Now that is a class that I have done traditionally in person uh, to many students, as I mentioned, that come from all over the world. But we're re working very hard now to get that all uh, online so that we can offer that online. And again, the best way to get information is to go to our website, um, leatriceisman.com, uh, to get that information. Well, thank you so much, Lee. And I'm going to put all this information for all of you who want to buy anything or take anything from, from Lee, and I'm sure you're going to have a lot of people doing that. I'm going to put all the information below and all the connections and the books, the how to get in touch with her. So um, thank you so much for joining. I really appreciated it and loved hearing everything. I could sit and talk to you forever. This is fascinating. We have to have a return appearance, right? Yes, we do. <laughs> we do. So thank you. You're welcome. Thanks.